unbelievably beautiful weather day today in Green Bay, and uh, brought me back to my South Dakota days. So it was uh, great energy out there today. A lot of fun for us in practice in the kicking game for sure. Um, before I get started, just you know, obviously it's been talked about a bunch. Losing Coach Leach is, um, you know, it's it's anytime you lose anybody, but it's monumental not only to the college game but to anybody that got a chance to spend any football moments with them at, at any time. And, and um, we had a brief encounter way back at the Combine with him, myself, um, Coach Gruden, Coach Kiffin in the booth. Um, and next thing you know, everybody's drawing on napkins. And, and uh, he was an incredibly um, innovative, bright um, coach and, and a very interesting man. But um, we, we lost a good one there, and Coach Leach. So um, after that, I'll. Excited about the game coming home. Excited about playing on Monday night on our grass in our stadium with our fans. And any questions you have, I'll do the best I can to ask. Answer. Rasul was telling us today that sometimes during practice you tell Keyshawn not to take it out of the end zone, but he still does, and you guys kind of get into it. Has he earned the right to disobey you like that, or does he never <laughs> earn that right? <laughs> I think Rasul took you for a ride. So, um, you know, I. I, I Talk to Aaron Rodgers, and he tells me he uh, tells Keyshawn take it out all the time. So, we'll um, we'll see how the game goes. No, there's there's certain parameters going into the game, depending on you know who the kicker is and how deep in the corner he puts it, or how deep the ball actually is, or um, you know except for one really, I, we we've been pleased with the decisions he's made back there and the direction we're going. Keyshawn seems to have a lot of fans in this locker room. You know, Aaron was saying. Some of the players took a straw poll earlier this season as to who the favorite teammates would be, and Keyshawn has kind of popped up in that mix. Uh, what about your time with him in the Raiders gave you the belief that he could kind of seamlessly fit right in when he came over here? Well, I just, Keyshawn loves football. Um, he's very social. You know, he, I think he, he enjoys the, um, his players, um, his teammates. I think he works at being a good teammate, and he's a versatile guy as far as, you know, a player on the field. You know, he's done a lot of different things for us. Obviously, now he's become a return guy. He's been a really good coverage player in the past, and I think he gets better and better um, with his work with OG and what he's doing on defense. And, and uh, so I think, you know, he's an ascending player uh, with great energy and a great passion and love for football. So that's probably what I feel like his, his teammates must see. So, Rich, you and Aaron seem to have hit it off. Uh, you guys like each other, obviously. but. In all seriousness, um, do you have to tell him, hey, don't tell Keyshawn to always take the ball out? Because he seems to be very proud of Keyshawn for taking the ball out at his behest. Well, again, I, um, Keyshawn knows the parameters and, um, you know, when he should and shouldn't. But we've been in the mode of, you know, we'd like to try to, to set our offense a little bit if we can. And, um, you know, we've, we've ignited them a little bit to block well, as, you know, to block a little bit better um, as well. So I think it all works hand in hand. And, you know, we do not like when we can have the ball at the 25 and we have it at the 18. So we'd rather not do that to our offense as well. But there is something about, you know, the energy that they're putting into what they're trying to do. And, you know, when you get to this kind of weather and, and um, the ball doesn't seem to travel as far, and, and so you're trying to get a plan for, are they going to kick it in the corner? Are they going to try to kick it away from you? And um, some of those things. So, and sometimes when people try to kick it extremely deep, it gets there a little quicker. So you can kind of take it out um, that way as well. There's a little clock in his head. So I think we're making a, a big deal to some degree over nothing. But um, there are parameters to what he's doing, and um, he's done a good job with it. Thanks to the cold, you get a lot more opportunities to return. Kickers. Usually towards the end of the year, at, you know, especially here or in Chicago or those kind of stadiums, um, you're going to get more opportunities. The ball just doesn't seem to travel as far. And then depending if you're into the wind in some of these stadiums as well. So, How's Jack Coco done at long snapper? Is Monday night a challenge for him? He's talking to me. He's a very enthusiastic young man. Well, I think, again, the weather's a challenge for everyone, right? Whether it's really hot or whether it's really cold, it's a challenge. So he's solid, and um, I think he improves every day. He's working at um, all the things he needs to work at to, to get better. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we're doing a good job with guard around him, and I think our unit's been coming together, trying to get a little bit better each week. So it'll be a challenge for him just like everybody else. Rich, what's the coldest you've ever been on a football field? Yeah, great question. I think my freshman year in Yankton, we played in Aberdeen, South Dakota. I still can remember that day like it was my cleat ripped on the opening kickoff and had to tape it up. My foot was soaking well. I don't know if I've ever been colder than that. But um, 
I've, I've been around some cold stuff. South Dakota gets kind of cold. We played in Chicago a few years back when I was in Dallas on a night game. It was bitter. And uh, so, but, you know, the great thing about the weather is on game day, it's the same for both teams. So I'm not a big guy that thinks you've got to practice in extreme heat to get acclimated to playing in Tampa or Miami. And I'm not a guy that thinks you've got to practice in extreme cold to get ready to play in extreme cold. It's the same for both teams on game day. So, but what do you, like we were just talking about a game in Chicago in 07 that a bunch of us covered. And it was like, there was a long snap. Rob Davis had a long snap to the punter and the wind was so strong behind him that it actually, it almost didn't get back to the punter. Yeah. And, and I'm just wondering, you know, are there certain things though, regardless of everybody having to play in the same conditions that you have to be prepared for because it's going to be so difficult? I think the, the kicking game wise, wind is always the biggest issue, right? Whether you're playing in great weather, the wind could be an issue. So um, there's things you have to do. Do you squeeze your alignment or move your alignment according to the wind or some of those things on um, whether it's a field goal, short snap, or whether it's a punt snap. And, you know, going back to Chicago, I think it's 85 when the Giants are playing the Bears in the playoffs, you know, Lendetta completely missed the ball, you know, from the drop because of the wind. So I think the wind is always the main issue. Um, how windy is it? It has a lot to do with the direction the punters and the kickers are going to kick off or punt the football. And then certainly it has a lot to do with the drop from the hand to the foot by the punter. So there are things we work on. We work on wet ball drill all the time and those sort of things. So, um, yeah, I think there are a lot of things you work on, but a lot of them are pertaining to the wind. You know, those guys have to do a good job of keeping their hands to some degree, um, not cold, but also moist enough. So, you know, when you go put your hand on a kicking ball in cold weather, you want to take that? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you put your hands on a kicking ball in cold weather, it's, it's difficult now. So, because the ball changes, obviously, in cold weather. And then those kicking balls, they only get rubbed an hour before the game and or 90 minutes before the game. So it's a different ball as well. Um, one, I'm sorry, one more thing. Um, you know, we've all been around Mason for a really long time. You have not. What have you, what's been your experience with him in terms of his performance, in terms of the kind of guy that he is to work with? What have you thought about your time with him this year? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited that I've had this opportunity to be with Mason, you know, all the way back to spring. I think I talked about what I'm going to have a chance to learn from him. And, and um, he's been a, you know, a, a huge compass for me as far as playing in our stadium, um, how practice schedule should kind of look like for him at the, at the age that he's at and the years that he's played. And so he's done a great job, I think, with that. And I think the thing I've noticed the most about him, he's an extreme competitor, you know. And um, if he has maybe a – some of us would call an average day, you know, two days later he comes back and it's a, it's a violent, really good day. Um, he just had one yesterday. He had a tremendous day yesterday. I think he went – 10 for 10, and, and um, it's really, I thought, you know, played well as we've gone towards the end of the season here. So, and I think he's kind of getting his strength back a little bit um, going coming from the injury and training camp. But for me, he's been a great compass as to um, how we do some things in our stadium and how we play with some of the teams in, in our division. And again, the way in which he carries himself in the meetings, he's a great leader for us. You know, he's been through a lot of football. Um, I think he's done a great job of echoing what we're trying to do and how we're trying to um, build our culture a little bit within the special teams units. So I'm, I'm excited about my time with Mace.